Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 8th. First up, this first article is from Craig N. And as a matter of fact, all of the articles this week were sent in by listeners. Thank you very much, and I'll try to give everybody correct credit for this. This is from BBC.com, and the title of this article is... 3D X-Point Memory Faster Than Flash Storage Unveiled. This is a new type of memory that it's not going to replace your uh, regular uh, DRAM memory in your computer, but it's pretty close to being as fast as that, so this is going to be an in-between kind of memory, and because of the way it's made, you can address individual bits of memory on it, and you can address them very quickly, so it's a little bit faster than using SSD drives and a little bit faster than flash drives, so you can keep things in storage. And they ask the question here, why do we need faster storage? The flash storage in my smartphone and PC seems more than fast enough because there are other situations where using today's storage slows things down and introduces constraints. Uh, one of the things they bring up here is especially gaming, when you get to points in gaming where you have to load the next set of worlds when you're like walking through the game and it just can't keep up. Supposedly this 3D memory is going, the 3DX point memory is going to take care of these problems so you're not going to have anywhere near as many slow necks, anywhere near as many bottlenecks in the system. And uh, because it's laid out 3D way, it's uh, certainly fast enough to speed up your computer. It's uh, Like they said, it's like a factory that has a huge warehouse far away, but you also have small warehouses of stuff people frequently buy close by so you can access that very quickly. So uh, this is going to be a, a nice step in that direction. And because the cost point of it, too, is going to be fairly um, decent, they're going to put this, it looks like, on the motherboard of the computers. They're going to have this, and then what you can do is you can access that a lot quicker. And so uh, something to a little bit speed up. It looks pretty good. And next is from Dave N. and Bob H. That's the Hitchbot. Some of you may have been following that on the news. There's a hitchhiking robot that was built by some guys in Canada that had already gone across Germany and gone across, I think, Norway too, the Netherlands. Or no, gone across Canada, the Netherlands, and Germany without incident. But what happens? It gets to the United States and two weeks later makes it to Philadelphia and the thing gets its head ripped off. So... Poor Hitchbot, but I guess along the way they actually did. Uh, some people picked up what was left of it, the body and the arms and the legs of the Hitchbot, and took it to a screening of a movie. So um, I'm going to post some of the articles to that. Um, it says an, an unnamed person is in the process of bringing Hitchbot back to its creators in Canada right now, but it did get to stop over and see mall rats in Brooklyn. So the guy stopped by, but and there's a picture of them here. I'll put the picture up of them posing with. Uh, Hitchbot here uh, minus his head. It's not really so much a real robot. I mean, the arms and legs just uh, are floppy pieces of foam and plastic. It looks like it's more a, a computer, I think, some kind of a computer that can respond to limited amounts of human interaction. But uh, the creator said they actually built it to track what human interaction with the robot would be like. So they said even with the fact that it was vandalized at the end, it's still kind of accomplished what it was there for because that was a form of hu human interaction, violent as it may have been. But I'll put up uh, three different, I got three different links to it here that explain what's going on with the Hitchbot. And, and it looks like some people either going to um, fix up uh, Hitchbot and put it back on the thing. And there's another group, I guess, that has another similar project that's going to carry on from where Hitchbot left out. And I'll put the articles. This one is from, one of them is from Clapway.com and talking about that it's uh, what Hitchbot started is far from over, and in 2016 they're going to carry on either with another Hitchbot or something similar. This next one is from Vine Report. Thank you, Thomas, Navy Thomas, Tom H., for sending this in. GoPro Hero 5 release date pushed back to 2016. Originally, I think it was scheduled to be coming out around October of this year, but because I guess they want to get it right, they, they want this... Uh, Hero 5 to be uh, ready for prime time and not have a lot of problems like have been in the past with some of the releases. I guess they're going to delay it. But some of the interesting things they talk about here is the fact that it's going to be 8K resolution and they're going to try to bump the um, 4K resolution up to 60 frames per second. Um, no guarantee about any of these things because they've yet to be finalized. But another thing they talk about it is somebody says it's going to be uh, a dual lens setup for 3D video. So... Um, I talked to Tom about it, and I'm kind of wondering, too, are they setting this thing up to be used more for professionals now? 
it'd be hard for me to believe they're going to keep the price point for release on this around 499 or maybe even 599 I think we're talking maybe a little more money than that but hey it would be nice if they can keep it in the lower price range but yeah 3d with the dual lens set up so that means to me they probably are going to have a dual pickup for it too besides and just all the extra things would have to really increase the cost significantly but uh yeah uh just sometime in 2016 no exact release date but i'm kind of curious about it too what do you guys think about the 3d also i i think as far as the regular vloggers and moto vloggers and sports people and stuff i think it was kind of a novelty uh hero did in the past have with the hero 2 even they had a, a 3d setup for that where you could kind of link two of them together and it was popular for a short period of time but i just don't think for the the normal type of uh, moto vlogs or even sports vlogs i think 3d is still more like a fad level than it is anything else but that's just my opinion and next up this is from damien t this is the another version of a hoverboard now lexus is the one taking credit for this i believe yeah lexus but actually if you look at it it's a german engineering development team now i talked about the other hoverboard they had that was uh made that you had to have a copper flooring underneath it and it used magnetic repulsion well this uses magnets too but it uses the magnets in a thing called uh, flux pinning i'd shown a video before i think of the guy that had the um, super magnet on a track and if you take the super magnet and you put it on a certain position over the track it will kind of like stay there like it remembers its position it's not really remembering it but that's the best way to state it and then you spin the thing around the track and then as it's going around the track you can actually tip it sideways or even upside down and this super cool magnet will stay in its place and just keep going around the track with nothing but uh, air, air to resist the motion so it keeps going and going and going for quite a long time that's what flux pinning is about it's like uh, in one one portion of a magnetic field you place a superconductor and it wants to stay there and that's what they're doing for this now one of the articles here i'll have three different articles about this i'll show a little bit of the video as i'm talking about it too one of the authors of one of the articles here was a skateboarder too although probably not a super skateboarder but he actually tried it and he said there are a lot of limitations as far as it was kind of hard to balance they had a skate skateboard track that looked like a concrete skateboard track but it was actually wood with magnetic rails underneath so that it could do the magnetic flux pinning the correct way so you had to stay within these tracked areas even though it looked like a, a skateboard park where you could go anywhere you wanted you had to stay within certain areas he said it was very tippy side to side and after trying for 15 minutes even though he's a proficient skateboarder he could only go about maybe uh, two feet he said smoothly and the rest it was either tipping over or scraping so um, but I still like I mean um, one nice thing about it is it uh, uses liquid nitrogen to cool the skateboard part of it and so you can go for 20 minutes at a time and then if like uh, during the demonstration they had another one charging with the liquid nitrogen while one was being used so just keep flipping them back and forth 20 minutes at a time sure still a rich man's toy but you know anything to, to get the first generation going you're not going to have hoverboards unless you have first generation stuff same thing same thing with airplanes same thing with cars very first ones that came out were not really they were kind of clunky they re didn't really last that long a lot of problems but same thing with hoverboards too so and also to me because this i'm really interested in maglev for mass transportation anything that's similar like this hoverboard system is is interesting to me so anyway thank you everybody for contributing this week it really made my job easy to have everybody else supply the articles i love that when my viewers contribute to what's going on here it makes the show fun to do so take care everybody i will catch you next week